knowing that mm. Stephen A. Smith oh. and Kimberly mm. and yep. RC, um, yeah. yeah. It's rough. All right, so Kim, let me start with you. Which team do you have winning the NFC North? Well, I'm glad you showed that tweet because I literally was going to say my answer is the Lions yeah. coming into today it's until I saw that loss. tweet. It's a huge, a loss. huge loss. But I will say beyond just that, I'm going to say the Lions because you look at that team. This was a team that won eight of its eight of the last two down the stretch. In the last ten, yes. Um, and, yeah, Jared Goff, thrown for over 4,400 yards. You have... Dan Campbell, a guy that a lot of people were critical of, especially after his introductory press conference and talking about eating kneecaps. Well, guess what? They, they was eaten in Detroit. <laughs> this is a team that showed from a coaching staff to, to the, the roster, the, the offseason um, that they've had, they are poised to do something special, and I think they will meet those expectations. What I do worry about, though, is you already hear Dan Campbell, a very fiery guy talking about, like, the hype train, it's already off the rails. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to own that. I want y'all to be like, yo, we did some things. We still got to build. We still got to build on mm -hmm. that. Right. But this is not just Green Bay's division anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, we coming. That's what I want. So I, I do wonder if Jared Goff and every, everybody else will sort of wilt under the spotlight. Right. But for right now, I think the Lions are primed to win that division. Well, I didn't have a problem with Dan Campbell sort of uh... – you know, Tempering trying, to, trying, to, trying to temper, you know, the hype machine and all of that other stuff for two reasons. Number one, um, it's a difference when you're the hunted as opposed to being being yeah. being a hunter. You would know, With right? Green Bay is not there. That's right. With <laughs> Green Bay, I like to be hunted, though. Come on, let's bring it. But I will tell you this. It's like you got to take that in consideration along with the fact that they open the season against Kansas City, the reigning defending Super Bowl champions, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. and then they go up against Seattle, obviously, with Geno Smith and those boys. So we got to take that in consideration as well. But I'm going to say the Lions because I'm thinking by default. I, 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 got to, I got to see a brother worthy of love before I give Jordan Love some love. I got to see worthy. <laughs> I want to hear all of this stuff about how you look in practice, mm -hmm. okay? Sure. And, and you know, I, I need to see it, okay? That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, Chicago, the worst team in, in, in football, okay, even though we obviously, Justin Fields, you know, we, we know what he's capable of. They got to build a team around him. The Minnesota Vikings, I think Dalvin Cook is going to be a huge loss. Uh, we know what Cousins to Justin Jefferson meant last year. I think everybody sees them coming this year. They're going to force Kirk Cousins to go in a different direction and try to beat him that way. We'll see what happens. I'm impressed with the fact that Jerry Goff went the last nine games throwing 15 touchdowns and zero interceptions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed with the fact that athletically, from an offensive standpoint, this team's got some skills that we can see what they're doing. And then they got David Montgomery, obviously, there now with this kid, Gibbs, that they drafted number 12 overall out of the backfield. So we'll see what they're doing. Their defense was horrid. They upgraded their secondary, but then we see Gardner Johnson yeah. is going down. Yeah. So now I am worried about yeah. that. But I'm not going to jump off the bandwagon just yet with that. I'm going to stick with the Lions to win the division. I think it may very well be their time. Their defense is the one thing I will say about the defense. Can't get much worse. Ain't no way to go but up because they were god-awful last year. Okay? Can't get much worse. And offensively, I I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I believe in golf because, again, some of the veterans that have been in the conference are no longer there. And so we're looking at the Hurts. We're looking at the Brock Purdy's of the world. We're looking at the Geno Smiths of the world. Can Jared Goff, who's been to a Super Bowl before, be in that mix? I believe he can. I'm going to stick with Detroit for the moment. You know, I was planning to come and talk about the Minnesota Vikings because I do believe until they are unseated in the NFC North that they're the team. You add Brian Flores to a defense that was absolutely putrid last year. Yeah. You replace a guy like Adam Thielen, who seemed like he was getting a little long in the tooth and was getting lost in the shuffle with Jordan Addison, who won the Bolitnikoff Award at Pitt two years ago and then was a stud at USC along with Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams. And you think about what that offense could be. I do believe Dalvin Cook is a loss, but they're going to spread it out and put it in the air. T.J. Hawkinson, K.J. Osborne, Justin Jefferson, and now Brian Flores defensively. I believe they're the team to beat coming in. But I do want to mention some things about the Lions because it's off of things that you guys have said. I love the fact 
that Dan Campbell has changed from having to bite kneecaps mm. to tempering <laughs> expectations. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it shows me evolution. It shows me evolution in who the Detroit Lions are. When you're one of the worst teams and organizations in the entire league, you got to go bite some kneecaps. You got to say, we're going to get knocked down, but we're going to get back up. Because you know those are the adversities you're going to have to face to get to a point where you're no longer the underdog, which they aren't anymore. They're actually kind of America's darlings when you go back to hard knocks. Everybody falls in love with Dan Campbell. We've already seen him doing up-downs or burpees with his team in this camp. Jared Goff, who everybody wrote off, who should have been starring in the Barbie movie this week as Ken, was a guy that finished the season so strong last year, you forgot he was jettisoned from the Los Angeles Rams, and he can maybe be this quarterback of the future going forward. And if he's not, you drafted Hendon Hooker in the third round. Brad Holmes is doing an amazing job as the GM of the Lions. And Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is a huge loss. I thought he was one of the best players on the Philadelphia Eagles last year. But you know what else he did, Brad Holmes did in the draft? He drafted Brian Branch. So along with, along with, with uh, Kirby Joseph, along with Tracy Walker at safety, now when you lose Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Brian Branch, who comes from Alabama, who should have been a first-round pick, steps right in. The Detroit Lions and what they've become in just two short years under Dan Campbell is nothing short of phenomenal. I'm on Ross St. Brown, a star at the slot position. And so when you're looking at the Lions, even though I have the Vikings coming into this season as my favorite in the NFC North, I would not be surprised if the Detroit Lions are the team standing on the opposite sideline of the Philadelphia Eagles come NFC Championship Week. Also very determined and hungry. So through the smiles, there's still this. I really want this badly. I'm ready to be great, ready to be excellent again. The doubts are for whoever has them to have them, but it's not what enters my mind and my body. I know what I can do. Uh, Stephen A. Smith. Will OBJ be a 1,000-yard receiver this season with Lamar as his quarterback? No, I don't believe so, but that's no knock against his ability. If Odell Beckham Jr. is healthy, he is a star in this league. I love the fact uh, that Lamar Jackson finally has a weapon mm -hmm. that he can rely upon because this is a guy, and this is a franchise in terms of the weight Ravens wide receiver. They landed dead last in the NFL last year in receiving yards in three of the last four seasons, I might add. Um, and they've never had a wide receiver selected to a Pro Bowl in their 27-year history. And so we understand who the Baltimore Ravens are, what their signature is, what it's been under John Harbaugh, and good luck with seeing that change. I got to see it to believe it. But I also want to take into account the bevy of weapons that they have available to them. Bateman can ball. He's only 23 years of age coming off of injury. But he can ball. He's going to be a target. Obviously, you've got Andrews at the a tight end spot. Obviously, you got to also look at Zay Flowers, who they drafted. And you have to look at the running ability of a guy like Lamar Jackson. Jackson. Lamar Jackson hasn't been the most accurate deep ball thrower in the NFL. So we got to take all of those components into consideration. I think that Odell Beckham Jr. will make some noise. I think that definitely when on the field and healthy, he will show out. He will definitely have his moments. But I think because of the multitude of talent that's around him, combined with how things are usually run in Baltimore, along with Lamar Jackson's mercurial running ability and his inefficiency throwing the deep ball. I think the combination of all of those things don't equate to a 1,000-yard season. But again, I don't think it's because of Odell Beckham Jr.'s lack of talent. I think he's going to have his moments where he reminds us what a star he is when he's healthy and on the field. I just don't think it equates to a 1,000 yards. Steven... A. Smith, I am disgusted with you. <laughs> Who are you? Are you out of your mind? You telling me, and it's a 17-game season, if Odell Beckham Jr. is healthy for 17 games, he can't give you 1K? Were you not, I'm not even going to say that. When we sat down with Jalen Ramsey, we asked him, who are the top five wide receivers in the league? He, he 
mentioned Odell Beckham Jr. while on the team with Cooper Cup, getting to watch them both practice because he's special. Let's go back to the Super Bowl. Ask Jalen Ramsey the same question. He says, oh, would have been the MVP of the Super Bowl. When Odell Beckham Jr. comes out and makes this statement, Cooper Cup says, sets my DVR because he's box office. He's big time. And when you're and when you are Lamar Jackson and you now have Odell Beckham Jr. on your team and you mention all of these other people and I get it. Ain't none of them dudes Odell. Ain't none of them dudes was the guy you was watching when you was back in Louisville and you knew when he caught a slant from Eli Manning. Since we're talking about not being a great deep ball thrower. When he caught a slant from Eli Manning. I'm going to get my cup. And when he put it in his hand like this what nothing you could do with him but chase his Nikes. Odell Beckham Jr. has had over a year to get healthy, over a year to remember who he was, who he left the Super Bowl field as. Odell Beckham Jr. is going to go absolutely crazy. They can spread it out. They can run it. There's other people to pay attention to. He's going to be big time and come up clutch when big time plays are needed. All right, so the answer is no. And I'm shocked that I agree with Stephen A over RC because me and RC are always, we always in lockstep. Stephen, you and I, we just don't be seeing eye to eye. But on this, we do. And again, RC, it is not because Odell can't be that guy. But the difference with the 2023 Ravens is that Lamar just doesn't have one target now. Mark Andrews had been his security blanket for so many years. Now you have the option of a Zay Flowers. Like to me, Zay a Flowers is yards? the guy to... Bro, relax, relax, mm, come. A thousand You got yards? Zay Flowers, you got Odell, you got Rashad Bateman, who's gonna, a guy they are very high on. You've got J.K. Dobbins, you've got Lamar Jackson, all of these weapons on the field. And what has already stood out in practices with the Ravens is that they love the camaraderie in that wide receiver room. They love the up-tempo pace. They love that they can spread the ball around and utilize the entire field, the pace of play. This just won't be the Odell Beckham show. What we will see is Odell Beckham make highlight plays. But 1,000 yards, I would say no, just because of the plethora, finally, of weapons that Lamar Jackson has at his disposal. Okay, we got to leave it there. I do want to mention I that. I just don't like RC. His tone is mad so off. You know, look at Matt. He's disgusted puffing, with me. That hurt my just, feelings. Yeah, yeah. That hurt my feelings. Uh, in the Lamar Jackson era, Marquise Brown is the <laughs> only player that broke hurt. the 1,000 yard receiving record in a season. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.